Welcome to Real Money Talks. Real strategies from the money makers and the world changers that you can use to make millions, keep those millions, multiply your wealth, and build your team. Here's your host, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View, Laurel Langmire. Hi, this is Laurel. Welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks. This is a podcast that teaches and interviews amazing people about how to make money, how to keep money, how to invest it, really creative strategies, and how to integrate your team. So there's a lot of conversation and uh, just like really great experts that I've brought to our podcast, to this community, and to share with you openly as you build your team and put the pieces of what you need in your financial masterpiece together. Today, I have Robert Jones. He's a friend. He's a client. He is awesome. And you're going to totally hear through the phone and and through this podcast. Thank you, Laurel. I'm already saying thank you, so I appreciate that already. (laughs) I was going to say, you're already going to hear his energy. He can't contain it, which we don't want him to. Uh, But he is one of the only independent, non-franchise networking groups. And it is the largest networking group in the Arizona market. They're opening up in Utah, Southern Cal. There's some great people that are going to be part of all of this. I'm going to be covering a magazine down there soon and actually going to be uh, keynoting and uh, just really love uh, working with networking together. So, Robert, welcome to uh, Laurel's Where Money Talks. Hey, thank you, Laurel. I appreciate getting on your story. On your story, I'm like, I feel like we're talking story on your show. And I love it when you come onto the stage. You also bring a great amount of energy to my audience, to the guests that we have. And, you know, it's been about 15 months since you've been on our stage. So we've probably tripled in size since the last time. So I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised when you walk across there and you see all the new faces. That's all. I can't wait. That's awesome. So talk about... Just your background. I mean, actually give some background before networking together. What? Because that usually, you know, everyone's background leads you to this next place that you are. So where did you come from? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, because you know where I'm at now is certainly never where I thought I would be. I thought I would be in some cubicle somewhere just hacking away on computer stuff the rest of my life. And you know what? I'm so thankful that I'm not in that position. I grew up in Texas. I joined the Marines. Um, I served for uh, six years. Um, I was field radio communications. I also did tech work. Computing was always in my blood. After I got out of the Marines, I ended up going to the University of North Texas, graduated in business with a minor in psychology, then came out to Arizona and went to school for statistical analysis um, at ASU, the Sun Devils. And so I um, ended up loving San Diego so much from when I was in the Marines. I was like, I got to, man, San Diego is amazing. I didn't know it could be like 76 degrees during the summertime, right? You know, being from Dallas, Texas, I mean, it would be like 76, you know, percent humidity and maybe 100 degrees, right? So I stayed out there. I um, became owner of a company called Insightful Solutions. I hired it for people. We grew really large, but I still had a, a desire to be back by family because, Laurel, you know, I'm, I'm all about family, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I love, you know, and that's why Network Together is the way it is by always bringing our kids into all of our events. So, you know, what happened was I came out here and um, I had Insightful Solutions. I tried to work, but, you know, this business environment was very different in Arizona than it was in San Diego. And what happened was, is uh, I came out here and I went to a chamber of commerce and um, I wanted to join the chamber. But unfortunately, the executive director there did what I did and wouldn't allow me to join. And I was like, no yeah. And, and so I was just like, well, this is kind of a cruddy <laughs> chamber of commerce. So I kind of floundered around. Um, I got into the real estate boom. I didn't have the right people around me. I had several houses and I was trying to rent them. Here I am. I sold off part of my business. I had a place in San Diego. I had um, I was buying places in Arizona. And you know what happened? 2006 to 2008 happened. And you know what happened to me, Laurel? What? <laughs> well, I didn't have the right people around me like you. I lost yeah. everything. You know, I, when I was that? 2008. You said 2008, yeah. nine. Yeah, 2008, yeah. nine. And during yeah. that time frame, I got married, had a kid, and. To kind of fast forward a little bit more, I had to stay with my parents for a little while, kind of regroup myself. And I said, I'm never going to have that happen again. So I ended up creating my own networking group called Network Together. But I I didn't look at it as like being a business of its own, right? 
And I didn't know I would enjoy networking and people so much because I was more on the tech, you know, technical side, um, you know, creating websites, doing search engine optimization, helping people write great content. And then two years in, my wife and I got married about four years ago and we decided maybe we should put more effort in the network together because people need to find an alternative to other networking style of groups. And so, you know, in the last couple of years, it's been a rocket launch and having mm-hmm. over 1,200 um, members just in Arizona alone in our footprint. So we've really grown. So it's been amazing right now. That's awesome. And so let's talk about just, I mean, networking in general. So yeah. I think people, they, they network and I'm going to speak as a woman. I think a lot of uh, women network to have girlfriends and things to do and stay busy, but they're not using network to make money. So let's talk about how what you're doing, I see is just different. I mean, from the way you do your, I'm going to say your sponsors, your tables, like, you know, and I think, you know, our work together has really created a different revenue model, Mm -hmm. but it's not just for that. I mean, if I'm going to attend, there's an energy around and you know that I'm going to do it again when I speak on the stage of getting the group to make money, not just have a chat. So talk about networking and money making. Well, you know, I'm going to start it with the basic level of network together. And that's the chapter. Anything doesn't work if you don't put effort into it. Wouldn't you agree with that? I mean, Would. nothing does. You know, yep. and, and let me talk a little bit, too, about women and men. You know, in Network Together, it's one thing to say that, um, you know, women and men, the, the equality of opportunity, you know, the equality of having merit and getting ahead. In Network Together, all of our chapters are ran and led by a man and a woman. You know, so I put my value in that statement. We're equal. It's just how you pursue your dreams, right? So at the chapter level, we have on average at least two guests come to our chapter each and every week. And I'm like, you have to go to the chapters to get the value of those relationships. You know, and what we teach our our members are, if you just go 50 weeks a year and you see two guests, that's 100 people per year. And, you know, when you see 100 people per year, you know, we teach them. It's like, look, if you're anywhere near being passionate about what you do, you should at least bring in seven new clients from those 100 people a year. And we say you want to constantly utilize the chapters like you would Facebook or LinkedIn or sending out emails or sending out postcards. It's all about being in front of other people. It's all about having the confidence of self. You know, we put on a thousand meetings and events in Arizona you know, and we teach them the value is being seen. You know, the value is is the voice that you have and what you offer and having the confidence to just ask. You know, the biggest thing I see, it's like some people have a fear of money and they don't know how to manage money and they don't look at money as a friend. They look at it as a, a you know, like an adversary. You know, sometimes I have to work with people to say, you know, people People need to be looked at in the same way. You have to have a relationship with them and truly value and care, you know, with them to actually, you know, create a sense of worth and reciprocation with each other. And so we teach that at the chapter levels. And, you know, it's like anything else. Those who I see all the time always seem to be the most successful, right? Yeah. But as a person grows, and we have five pillars in network together, and the first pillar is public speaking. And as we see them grow, we might come up to them and say, hey, we have an event coming up. We'd like you to get on one of our smaller stages to speak. And so what does that do for them that creates more confidence? Because when we're approaching to they become more valued, you know, among their peers. And so it's like they get more exposure, they get more credibility by being up there. And it's an exciting place. And to what you were talking about is up on our big stages. So, you know, Laurel, being a member of Network Together in your level, you get to be on our largest stage and, you know, you're getting to train, you know, value and help people manage money. And, you know, it creates a tremendous amount of value and exposure and, you serve as a standard for our members to look at so they can follow you and, you know, our other speakers that come up on our stage. And so that's a part of the model is if you have the power and voice to publicly speak and have that confidence, is it going to translate into doing better business? Absolutely. Is it going to help you with the conflicts and resolution? Absolutely. Is it going to cause you to maybe start increasing your skill set so you can be a better expert in what you do. These are all ways that we help people. It's, it's kind of like the game within the game. You can yeah. actually know what you 
need to do to succeed, but it's those little etiquettes, it's those little things that actually create the energy and the inertia for true success. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about value. And I think that another thing that Network Together does and what you do and, you know, Sean, your wife, me together, you're running and growing this organization in other states, but you teach value at a different, I'm going to say at a different conversation than most here. So talk about that. Well, I mean, the first mm-hmm. place that you have to find value is in yourself. If you don't have self-worth, self-esteem, self-acceptance, self-awareness, you can't possibly market yourself. You can't possibly create impact. You cannot possibly be compelling with your offer if you don't start with valuing yourself first. And some of the things that we do in Network Together, there are different. One of the things is when we do 30 seconds, we call them our um, net commercials. And so when we go around, a lot of groups have them. They have net commercials. Did you know that each and every time that someone stands up and sits down, we applaud them. Mm. And we do that because it's an affirmation of us to them, but we also make them stand so they get comfortable being in front of people. The number one fears, if not the number one fear is what? Public speaking. Funny. I know. It's like, my gosh, I I do not want to be up there. I mean, and so, you know, and the human mind always goes to the uh, most vibrant movement in the room. So you stand up, you say who you are, we applaud them. That is like one element of self-affirmation that we do. We also sit down with them when we ask them, you know, what are your goals? What are you attempting to accomplish? How can we help you? We have, you know, networking 101 training. We have webinars. We have in-chapter trainings. All of this training and, and, and all of the webinars and, you know, and all the conversations are to do one thing, help them get to their self-worth. The second part, and that's just the first part, the second part of our value is rank worth. So when I talk about rank worth is if I were to utilize you, let's say, as my electrician or as my plumber or as my business coach or as my accountant, What makes you stand out versus everyone in your industry? What is it that's your competitive advantage? And what is your market niche that says, I want to do business with you? And one of the things that we look at, we have another um, workshop called Vulnerabilities and Triumphs. And I always say, it's like, look at your five most valuable clients as your triumphs. Because we always talk about what's your ideal marketplace? Who is your ideal client? If you just take your five most ideal clients and kind of make a composite of that person, I'm like, look, go after that person. You will also go to the second step is time. We don't have enough time, right? You can always make more money, but you can't make more time. And by knowing who you're going after and knowing who you're going to track, you can't help but find more value and offer more value when you put yourself in that space. Yeah. What do you think some of the deterrents are? I mean, obviously, you, you spoke to self-worth, self, you know, esteem to self-confidence. But what do you think some of the deterrents are? I'm going to speak, you know, and I know you have a lot of women in your group, but a lot of times they, I'm going to say, don't not see the value, but they don't go for it. What do you think that is? You know, like they have something great. You and I see that they have something great and they just don't present the value or go for it. I mean, we probably know the reasons we don't have to go there. How do you then through the networking experience, help people bring that forth? Because I think that's what you and Sean do really well, like applauding and acknowledging and not like that sounds cheerleading because there's a deeper cut to that. that There is a deeper cut to that. I mean, And the deeper cut is being accepted. You know, one of the things that I don't hear enough in any circle is how valuable acceptance is. So let me give you an example. Let's say kids, if they're accepted by their parents, how much more out of life are they going to get if they're not accepted by their parents, right? If they're accepted into an institution like a college, how much more you know, value are they going to feel internally than if they're not accepted at an institution? If they get good grades, if they get merit, if they score well. To me, in our group, the first thing that we have is we accept people in. First to understand, then to be understood. Stephen Covey said it a long time ago. And I train that in our group to say, look, people come back because they feel accepted, right? But 
people continue to come because of the bonds that they create with each other. And it's those bonds, a lot of acceptance in our bonds. I say the fastest way to change your life is the people that you hang with, right? And the information that you feed yourself with. And so when it comes to the excuses, I mean, it could be the family, it could be the group that they're around. I mean, it could be the television. Heck, I even say, you know, I have to compete with the toilet. Some people think that they can, you know, Facebook and do digital marketing on the toilet. And I'm like, you know what? No, get get out of your house, get into this chapter and sharpen your saw. Absolutely. Now I'm going to go somewhere else about sharpening your saw because it's also about like just really how we prior to our podcast started talking about just time. And I yeah. know there's a lot of people that are more advanced they kind of know when they have their strategy on how to manage time, but believe it or not, I think more than what 70, 80% of people have no idea, not only how to manage time calendar. So how do you teach it? And then I I just, I'm going to layer in some depth that I think you're going to, we're going to have fun talking about. So how do you teach just how to manage that? Because I, number one, you, you can't control it. You have to control yourself. Right. So. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, you know, are you going to be controlled by time or is time going to control you? You know, let's be real here. I mean, we are all controlled by time. It is a limit that we can do nothing about. But when I teach my audience about time, I teach it in this way. You know, we talk about goals all the time. And, you know, sometimes it's always like, you know, one year goals, three year goals, five year goals, lifetime goals. I'm like, look, guys, it's great to have goals that are that broad and that sweeping, but it doesn't matter. Every building starts with a brick or every building starts with a foundation. Every building starts with a piece of wood. But I tell them it starts in the day. What are you doing today? What are your goals today? So my goal is, is I need to reach out to people. My goal is I need, you know, do your revenue producing things first. I mean, Laurel, that's one of the things that you have taught me is put the things that don't bring you revenue, put them later in the day. You know, when you have your most energy and you're most passionate and you're raring to go in the beginning of the day, because man, if you're an entrepreneur and you're not like just like exploding with energy to start each and every day, you're probably, and I tell people this all the time, you're probably in the wrong profession, find something else. Because when I wake up in the morning, that's when I have my energy. That's when I make my calls. But part of it is, is first, what are your goals for the day? What are your goals for the week? And what are your goals for the month? That is the bedrock to get to the the longer term goals of years. The second thing is, is once you've established these little goals, is like, what are going to be your actions? So I want to increase, you know, my revenue for this month. You know, so I break it back to my days. I break it down even to the hours. And I look at these micro goals and say, I have to do these set of actions. So the first step is, is assigning goals, even daily and weekly goals, creating your actions. And then the next thing is, is writing them down and kind of um, seeing what the outcomes are. Because without having some type of mechanism to say, well, I've worked on my script. I've been better on my phone calling. um, I'm writing better emails. I'm doing this and that. If I don't at least kind of test it like I did in computer networking from A-B testing, and I'm not measuring the outcomes, how do I know if what I put into something is actually bringing me more back? And that's really amazing. So for time, I always call it the GAO of value. That's G-A-O. What are your goals? (laughs) What are your actions? And how do you measure the outcomes? Absolutely. And I want you to speak to one thing. I know, I mean, I could just keep talking with you, but we're coming to the finish line. No, I want you no, to talk how about, do we do that? I, know, right. <laughs> I know, I know we're going to keep going for a little bit because I want to talk about the pattern interrupt. I think it's one of the biggest lessons to teach people. And I do it. I do it to my company. I do it to myself. I do it just because when you like, there's just this routine and routine that sometimes I say it's just because you got used to it. It's not because you're consciously choosing like, what's the result I'm going to create today? What's yeah. the result? And one of the words of the phrases I use is for the sake of what, for the sake of what are you doing that thing? And I think when you can process your time, your activity and cause it, you know, to correlate to a result, you just have a different life. So speak to that. I think this pattern interrupt, I call it, is so critical and people don't do it. The same crap for 10 years, wonder why the same result. Well, you know, I mean, and I, and I love that. And that's another statement I say again and again and again. You know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, you know, expecting a different result. 
I also look at it another way, you know, pattern disrupt. I call it this new word now is disruptor. I'm a this disruptor. I'm a that disruptor. I mean, it's always this disruptor. To me, it's not about disruption. It's about awareness. I think awareness, being aware of things is so much more powerful. And so you might say, okay, so how do you become aware? And I'm like, one of the probably the best tools that I've ever utilized is you do a time audit, a truthful blood and guts time audit. And you say, you know, I'm going to take these five days. I'm going to write down what I'm doing. I'm going to see what the results are from what I'm doing over this time audit over the next five days. And then look back on it. Take some time to like what we said, sharpen the saw and say, okay, I blew it here. I did great there. I could tweak this there. Right. And then implement immediately some impactful things that can sh- that you can change right away from your time audit. It's like, you know, in the business world, Laurel, you have accountants, they do historical things. And from the history, you can actually do pro forma, you know, but what's really crazy, us as people, we don't do the same thing with us. That's why we stay in the same hole. If we forget our history, it becomes a mystery. And then all of a sudden, we <laughs> actually, right? You know, if we forget a history, it becomes a mystery and we're bound to repeat the same failings that we did before. And so I'm avid, I am an avid proponent of actually journaling and recording your life so you can go back and look and truly see the outcome of your changes. Yep, I would agree. So what's your website? We need to bring it to a close, unfortunately. And How do people stay engaged with you? Is it through your website? I know you're opening up other cities. I'm heading to Utah. You know, I'm just making the assumption I'm going along with you. So I'm going to be your funny girl just going along, teaching money throughout the country with you. So I know you're across Southern Cal. Talk a little bit about your website. How do people stay in touch with you? All right. Um, People stay in touch with me by going to Facebook right away and typing in, you know, Robert W. Jones Network Together. Or they can go to LinkedIn and do the same thing. Look for Network Together. Also, my website is networktogether.net. That's networktogether.net. No fancy ways of spelling it. (laughs) It's spelled traditionally. And also for our big stage events, it's inetworkexpo.com. That's inetworkexpo.com. Or just send me an email. It's just robert at networktogether.net. I respond to everyone. Perfect. And so those of you that are out there, again, like stay on his list. Watch where he's going. Um, He's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. You know, selfishly, I want him to go to some markets that are like fun and we can go ski. I know we talked about the bail and, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Salt Lake, we're going to go deeper into the valley and ski. So, Robert, I appreciate you being on. Look forward to, uh, you know, continuing our relationship. And those of you that really want to engage at a different level of networking, and we're not going to name some of the old names, so the mm-hmm. franchise kind of uh-huh. stuff where they got a lot of restrictions. We're not going to say they're wrong. They're just different. And Robert's is better. So thanks for being we on the road. <laughs> <laughs> we do eight rules. We're the disruptors. It's so funny how that's like a new term because for us, it's like, well, of course, that's who we are. So I appreciate you being on. And uh, any last words for our audience? Yeah, I just the one pop rock that I want to leave is just learn to be true and authentic to who you are. It doesn't matter what others say. True value is found from within and not from the outside. Hmm. Thank you. And those of you that are listening, again, you can always ask questions, make requests, go to asklaurel.com, A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L. And uh, we will be, as usual, hosting a large webinar where I answer all those questions. But every day, those questions go to our team and they get answered for you. So stay tuned on Laurel's Row Money Talks as we head into some really creative and different money talks around legacy, parenting, getting kids to be millionaires before they're 10. I mean, really cool structures you got to put in your life if you want to get rich. So Robert, thank you. And the rest of you listening, see you on the next edition. Thanks for listening to the Real Money Talks podcast. Your host has been Laurel Langmire, author of five New York Times bestsellers, money expert on Dr. Phil, CNN, CNBC, The Street TV, Fox News, and The View. Want to learn more about off-Wall Street investing, tax strategies, and multi-million dollar business strategies? 
Visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast for past episodes, show notes, and resources. For some special wealth building gifts only for Laurel's podcast listeners, visit liveoutloud.com slash podcast gifts. Do you have a burning question for Laurel? Visit asklaurel.com to submit your question, and it may just be covered on a podcast episode. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to get new episodes every week. Thank you.